Good morning, everyone, and, and thank you for, for coming through to our showcase this morning. In a 2014 customer survey conducted by Bonfire Marketing in the U.S., authenticity came out tops as the leading component or element in terms of driving consumer behavior. And um, I found that very interesting because when asked about exactly what they want, 91% of customers or consumers said they would purchase from an authentic brand. Authenticity was key. 61% of the customers said, well, we're really interested in product utility. You know, how do, how do, how do products work? Um, what makes up these products, the, the functionality and all that? 60% of them said, well, they're interested in the brand appeal. You know, what really appeals to them is the brand. And it will be very surprising for you to know that only 39%, only 39% were interested in brand popularity. So indeed, authenticity does inspire trust, and it is trust that drives sales. Authenticity. Be your authentic self, we're told. Let your freak flag fly. Remove your mask. You know, I think it's quite pertinent for creative entrepreneurs, but I'm not sure whether it really works in the workplace. Does it work in the workplace? Well, the answer is a resounding yes. In fact, I would go as far as saying that authenticity is essential for your high-performing teams, for your growing organization, and for you and your fulfilling high-energy life. And so before I show you a couple of videos, I thought I'd just put up this statement and ask you to reflect on it. If people really knew me, they would say, I am. What is that word that they would say? So, of course, right now we're living in a time and age where exciting things are happening. I follow a lot of posts of some of my speaker colleagues, and I'm always intrigued on what Graham Codrington will say. And, uh, you know, following the American elections, it's quite interesting when you get to see this kind of Brock stuff. Brock and I were raised with so many of the same values. Like, like you work hard for what you want in life. From a young age, my parents impressed on me the values that you work hard for what you want in life. I mean, really? Talk about authenticity. This is one of my favorite authenticity videos. It's actually an Ukwazi FM uh, video. So this lady is coming in for an interview, and it's amazing how the music triggers her authentic self in that space. So, tell us about yourself. I hold two degrees. I did my master's in the United States of America. Hmm. I'm interested in that. I almost broke out into dance, but you, go, you can see I'm dressed too suave to start getting into some Zulu, Zulu dance. But really, authenticity in the workplace, does it work? It's almost quite abstract when you say, I'm coming to listen to a guy speaking on authenticity. How does it plug into the workplace? So I'm not suggesting this morning that you wear beads in your hair or a tie-dyed shirt, or maybe your holly jacket to the office. I'm certainly not suggesting that you embrace and hug each other when you come to work, or, or literally just be yourself and throw F-bombs in, in, in board meetings. I'm not suggesting that. But authentic, the word authentic is defined as of undisputed origin. Authenticity, therefore, means to be of your own undisputed origin. Which means to me that authenticity is not about your personality or what you wear. Authenticity is who you are as a person at your core. And after years of trying to please people and look good and smell fresh and do the right thing just to try and fit in and, and keep things together, it's amazing to me that we actually struggle with a simple question of who am I really? Who am I really? And it's amazing even in the corporate space that we struggle to answer this question. But let's face it. We all come into this world in the same way. We are a unique, magical, biological amalgamation of DNA, yet we strive to be different, to be special, to be loved and cherished and, and honored and respected. And in our attempt to be different and special, we often lose out on the authentic self, who we truly are. So you ask that question, well, 
authenticity in the workplace? Does it really work? Successful organizations today understand the importance of authenticity. That everyone in the organization, the team, the leaders, and even you yourself, you have to subscribe to authenticity. I know that kind of sounds like pie in the sky, like woohoo, but bear with me. The workplace is made up of individuals just like you and I. But for us to be able to deliver the results that we are mandated to deliver, we have to be authentic. Authenticity is key because it allows individuals to be able to work better together. And that means that we are able to connect one with another. Helen Keller says, alone we can do so little, but together we can do so much. And so that idea of connection becomes so important. Connecting one with the other. Of course, on the other hand, inauthenticity breeds fear, it breeds fighting and, and fatigue. The price that you pay for being inauthentic includes things like, well, you don't maximize your revenue opportunities. Unhappy customers and clients, hey, even unhappy staff. Lost opportunities. And in fact, you get to a point where individuals start working in silos. Think about your own organization. Working in silos. They don't communicate. They don't collaborate. They don't even support each other. Teams and individuals begin to undermine each other. And what amazes me the most is this, that organizations spend thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions, to try and get employees to work together better. But they miss the heart of the matter, which is creating an environment that fosters authenticity. Because when you get that right, you have creative people, innovative people. You have people who will deliver the best customer service to your clients. Ultimately, you want individuals to be their natural self. Individuals who have a voice, who express their own individuality, who express their disagreement, perhaps, with what you have to say. Inauthenticity. So, in terms of authenticity... There are four pillars of authenticity. The first one is self-awareness. The second one is redefining your values. The third is following your intuition. And what I want to share with you today, the fourth one, is fostering an open mind. We've been told as we were growing up as young people that, you know, keep an open mind. Open-mindedness is equated with, with uh, positivity and growth. In fact, if you have an open mind, you're more aware of what's going on around you. You're able to uh, assess possibilities. You're able to identify problems. You're able to even understand others and actually manage risk better. Open-minded people are often known to be generous and kind and caring. But it's something we struggle with. You know, authenticity and this open-mindedness is not something that's easy to sustain. Let's be honest about it. You know, letting your freak flag fly is not the easiest thing to do because our brains are just designed to shut out information just so that the brain can process the information it already has. We struggle when we just overloaded with data. It's kind of like, okay, big data, too much data, inside poverty. We just, we just can't handle it. In fact, psychologists, and Justin, you, you, you probably know this, psychologists say that human beings are cognitive misers. You know, our brains, we block information because we just want to handle and process what we think is important to us. In fact, we've also been called um, perceptive bias people because we want to affirm the information that we think and believe is right. We also have attribution error where we, we, readily, blame, um, we readily blame behavior on, on personality rather than circumstance. And all these different stereotypes that make us make snap decisions. Did you even know that those who consider themselves experts in their field, the experts in their field, are often very close-minded because they're stuck in their ways. They've been in this game for a very long time. One of the ways of improving your authenticity is by becoming mindful. That ability to be able to be in the present without judgment. Don't you think we struggle? I think we struggle very often with this idea of mindfulness. It's like we're constantly negotiating with our minds. If you're in a meeting, you really want to have a really successful meeting. Stop negotiating with your mind and try and stay in the meeting. It's not an easy thing to do. So let me take you on a journey. Quick journey now in your mind. Just stay with me, play with me, let's go along. And I'm trying to illustrate uh, authenticity. Let's say you've just won a prize to Mauritius. Wow, isn't that, I mean, already you, can, you can already see the island, hey? I mean, we were talking with Lynn earlier about Thailand and she was ex you know, sharing her, her own experiences. But let's, let's go to Mauritius. You've just won a prize. Work with me. Are we, are we all together? We're going to Mauritius. And you can see yourself at home packing your bag to get to Mauritius. Of course, you have to have all your, you know, because you're going to go skinny dipping. Well, you actually don't even need clothes then. But you know, you're going to pack yourself really well, got your clothes, and here you go. You get an Uber to the airport because you obviously have to avoid parking, and you're at the airport, and boom, you're in the lounge now. Man, and there's that plane. You can see it now, and you're in the plane, and there you are in one 
F, if that's the seat number, window seat, and shoop, you take off from O.R. Tambo, you're flying over Madagascar, thank God you're not landing there, and there you go, and there's the island, you can see it in the distance, and the plane comes in to land, and as you land, it's you and your partner, and boom, there's somebody waiting from you, oh, bienvenue, oh, bienvenue, and they're saying all those lack of things, oh, comment allez-vous, je vais très bien, merci beaucoup, it's beautiful, and you're so excited about all this thing, they take you to the shuttle, and you're in the shuttle, and off you go, you heard West is best, and you're off to Shangri-La, awesome resort of stayed there myself. As you get into the reception, ah, oh, welcome, man. welcome Mr. Granger, it's exciting. All you want to do is check in, drop your bags and go to the sea. And the reason you want to go to the sea is this, because of the coral barrier, they break the waves like half a kilometer into the sea, so you literally have half a kilometer of a swimming pool. Beautiful, the water is warm, you step in, can you feel the water? It's in your feet, it's tingling through your toes in Kanzla. Now it's so important. <laughs> Now, can you imagine that one word makes you mindless? You literally, within a split second, were moved from Shangri-La to KZN. And that's what happens in meetings. Our authentic self just disappears very often. And it's so essential, therefore, to, to, to really practice mindfulness. Because when you practice mindfulness, then you're even able to have less than one-hour meetings. Because we just like the default. Outlook, create new meeting, boom, by default. If you say 9 o'clock is the start, by default it ends at 10. Do you need an hour off? Not really. Then you just want to push that one hour. Authenticity and mindfulness are such an important component because they put us together in that space of efficiency, productivity, profitability. So, I'm going to just share high level the seven keys to business authenticity as I wrap this up. And then I'll, I've got a little surprise for you at the end. Hopefully I can pull it off. So the seven keys to business authenticity are as follows. The first one is publicly declaring what your organization will stand for and what it will not stand for. When an organization is clear about its objectives and also about what it cares about, it is able to attract the kind of people that want to work for it. It is also able to attract the type of customers that want to purchase from it. And it is able to ensure that the interests of the stakeholders are kept intact. They understand what the organization stands for. The second one is ensuring that you have proactive engagement between clients, the organization, and staff. And that engagement is no longer B2C, or C2C, or B2B. It's H2H. It's human to human. We've moved so far away from that authentic relationship, which is face-to-face, -face, speaking to people, hugging each other, you know, touching each other. We, we, we have become so impersonal. And it's not who we are as human beings. You think about it. If you live alone, it can be quite lonely. And sometimes you just want an embrace. Okay, well, that's for the ladies. You know, us guys, we, don't, we want more than an embrace. You know, after them, can we, just, can we go? Yeah, we want to go to base. Yeah. <laughs> but that proactive engagement, we are intimate beings. We want to be able to have face-to-face -face communication. The third key is this. Ensure that your organizations are glass houses. That speaks to transparency. Transparency of the direction that this organization is going. But not only that, transparency about the results, the changes that are taking place. Very often we have staff and employees who are unhappy in their organizations, not because they don't like the place, but they're just not kept up to date, informed about what's going on. Transparency, very important. Humanize the points of interaction. That really speaks to that age to age culture. Humanize them. People want to feel, your clients want to feel a connection. You know, you guys know me. I'm, I'm, I'm a Woolies fan. Like, every time I speak about Woolies, I just don't know why they don't sign me up as an ambassador. So if you're in here and you're Woolies, I'm sitting over here. It's such a powerful brand. I love Woolies. Because when I get to Woolies, the first thing I notice about walking into a Woolies store is it's clean. I love that. I never check the sell-by date on Woolies products. I don't even check price when I go to Woolies. I expect to pay a premium. I expect it. So I don't, I don't check price. I just chuck stuff in the, in, in the trolley. And not only that, Woolies have just designed a fantastic model around how they've designed their store. You know, when I go through the windy windy, it's fantastic. If you've come to buy bread at Woolies, it's the wrong place. You don't buy bread at Woolies because you leave with bread, chocolate mousse, a magazine. That's just the way they've designed it. They're constantly upgrading you without speaking to you. Isn't that amazing? It's great. And of course, the killer for me is just like, you know, the, the Woolies chicks are hot. You know, they, they're beautiful. Their mothers work at ShopRite. So this is the thing about, about Woolies. It's just a fantastic brand. And if, if ShopRite's in here, my apologies. <laughs> but humanize the points of contact. Hey, listen, even in the coldest place in the Woolies store, they're selling hot chicken. It's a psychology. It is a psychology. They've just humanized the interaction. 
And it's like, you, you can't serve yourself the chicken. You've got to speak to someone. That's the humanizing. Anyway, point number five. Follow the organization's influence. Get involved. Become the influence factor. Speak about it on weekends. When someone asks you where to work and you work at Standard Bank, say, I work for Standard Bank. Don't say, I'm in banking. If you work for British Airways, don't say, I'm in aviation. You work for British Airways. That's the authenticity coming through, the influence that you carry. Admit to and share the learning from mistakes. Listen, every organization is going to make mistakes. We know that. But the authentic organizations are able to respond to those mistakes and do something about it, something creative. They're honest about the mistakes that they've, that they've made, but they have mitigation factors that they will follow. And finally, don't change the deal and expect no one to notice, especially in a change environment. How often have you heard what's going to happen in the corridors? Authentic organizations make sure that the leaders are delivering the change mandate, the change messages before it's being heard in the corridors. They speak about it. You kept informed and updated and you consulted. Now, sometimes I think consultation goes too far. If I think about the union movement, I think sometimes we want to be consulted on everything. You're almost like in your budget. Okay, hold on. We must budget now. Um, when are we going to strike? We're going to strike. We're already planning for it. Like, how can you do that? But when you're communicating effectively, you are able to then mitigate those risks. Don't change the deal. 